President Trump's order to pull U.S. troops from Syria is now being carried out with the withdrawal of the first ground equipment. Our chief international correspondent, Clarissa Ward, is on the ground for us in northern Syria right now. Clarissa, how soon could we start seeing U.S. troops leaving as well? Well, that's a million dollar question, Wolf. I mean, we've been driving around this part of northeastern Syria for the last couple of days. We have seen a number of U.S. military convoys potentially carrying some of that military hardware that we're hearing uh, from the U.S. military. They are starting to pull out. But, Wolf, this is going to be a big operation. It is not going to happen overnight. There are at least seven substantially sized U.S. bases here, uh, many more smaller bases at least 2,000 troops. And Wolf, the U.S. military is saying they're actually going to have to bring in U.S. troops in order to help facilitate the move out of here. So this is going to take quite some time, unclear as of now, as to when they will start moving U.S. troops out. But probably we won't know exactly when that does begin for, of course, uh, very real security concerns. But at the moment, as you said, we do know uh, the withdrawal, in essence, has begun with the beginnings moving that military equipment, that military hardware out of the country, Wolf. Clarissa, as you know, uh, Syrian Kurds, who have been close allies of the U.S., uh, they will be the first to feel the impact of the U.S. troop withdrawal. What are you hearing uh, the latest on that front? It's a very sensitive issue. Well, if you talk to Kurdish officials here, they're trying to put a brave face on it. They're trying to say that they're optimistic. They're trying to say that they believe negotiations with U.S. officials uh, will bear out into some kind of agreement, some kind of a guarantee of their security uh, from their neighbor in Turkey, who view Turkish forces as uh, Kurdish forces rather as essentially an existential uh, terrorist threat. But if you talk to the people on the ground here, Wolf, that's where you get the real story. Almost every family in some of these towns has lost someone in the fight against ISIS. These have been some of the most steadfast U.S. allies on the ground. And now there's a real anger. There's a real sense of abandonment, a sense that the U.S. has essentially uh, taken what they need from them and is now leaving them, uh, leaving them to an unknown enemy uh, in Turkey. Their fears of a bloodbath, also fears of a potential resurgence of ISIS. And then the million dollar question becomes, well, what happens to the areas that the U.S. officials are, the U.S. military is pulling back from. Could we see the regime coming back into these areas, taking control of the vacuum with potentially Iran uh, and their Iran-backed forces? A lot of questions, and for people here on the ground, Wolf, huge amounts of anxiety, concern, and as I said, that feeling.